Okay, well, uh, welcome to my old friend Trevor Hasty, who's in his office about 10 feet away from me. We're going to talk. What's about your language? I'm not that old. What's what? I'm not, I'm not that old. old. <laughs> That's not what I heard. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about our 1986 paper on generalized additive models and the follow up paper with Andreas Bui in 1990, linear smoothers and additive models. So uh, go ahead, Trevor, tell us how the paper. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this all started in 1980. I guess in 1981, uh, Rob and I were PhD students together at Stanford. I came in 1980, Rob came in 1981. And, and th there was a special environment in, in the department. Uh, we worked and both worked in applied statistics and we got attracted to, to work that was being done by Jerry Friedman, Werner Stutzler, Brad Efron, um, but particularly these guys who had been working with Tukey and had got um, they'd got into smoothing, non-parametric regression, and you know, and this seemed such a real nice thing, you know, to be able to automatically uh, fit nonlinear functions to data, whereas everything we'd been doing up to to now had been linear. Right. And and so so I guess we both got kind of infected by this, and there were things like projection pursuit models and additive models. Right, and there was the ACE algorithm of Leo Bryman and, and and Jerry Friedman, and there was a lot of this stuff going on. And, and, we, and we both come from Commonwealth countries, right, where the, the right. statistics were GLMs, for example, were well known and used. GLMs were well known. I remember Rob just before I came to Stanford, um, I was all excited because two things. First of all, um, we interactive computing sessions were had just started, at least for me. It had been batch computing up till then. Right. But now you could use interactive computing sessions. And there was this new program called GLIM, G-L-I-M, yeah. you know, that came from England. And uh, and John Nelder was one of the pioneers of GLIM. And you could fit these generalized linear models interactively, you know, with GLIM. And there was a nice formula language and everything. So it was very exciting. So, for example, you could run a logistic regression with five variables and watch it being fit on the screen and wait for a little while. Yeah. The data set was fairly small. You could fit it, right? And you, I know you were you were working with Cox models with with colleagues in in the University of uh, Toronto, was it? Or, or, yeah, yeah. And similar, you were working with linear models. And then, and then we came. Um, th then we had Stanford be exposed to these nonlinear, non-parametric fitting methods. Right. And um, you were you you had a thesis on, on local likelihood, which was a way of of doing likelihood estimation yeah. using local ideas, which is the idea used in in scatter plot smoothing. Right. And 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 you and I talked a lot, and and we interacted somewhat on that. But then we had this idea: what if we could, we could enrich generalized linear models by instead of having a linear function, have the function of the parameters be additive, right? right. And 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 we want to do this in a way that uh, incorporated the smoothing methods that we've been learning about. So that that was the whole idea. Now, the, I think the department computer at the time was a P, maybe a PDP eleven or something. Yeah, we had the advantage that our, our, our RA ships were at Slack. Yes, where they're much faster computers than they were actually. Right? Yeah. yeah, right. It was a huge advantage. Yeah, right? yeah. Because um, we didn't, you know, we didn't have to also share it with tons of people like we did. Yeah, you know? and it was much faster. Yeah. So if I can just share the screen for a moment, there's there's our tech report huh. in in 1984. We both graduated at the end of 1984. And I know in my case, I think in Rob's case too, I could have graduated earlier. And uh, but we had this really exciting project going on, and we wanted to get, stay a bit longer so we could complete it. And so this is a tech report. Mm -hmm. But as Rob said, the the paper was published um, two years later in in Statistical Science. Um, um, it was a um, it was volume one, number three. So it was the, th the third issue of, of the, the, this new journal, Statistical Science. And, you know, and we're, 
this was my first major paper. And we had discussions, right, from, from yeah. these big names like John Nelder and Peter McCulloch yeah. and, uh, and Chuck Stone and uh, Leo Bryman. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was very exciting for us. For, for, for young graduates, right? We just graduated, yeah. yeah. And then the, the follow-up paper in 1989, was it? With, with Andreas Buyer? Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so this first paper, I mean, the first paper, what we basically did is we, you know, when you, when you, if you know how you fit generalized linear models, there's a procedure called Fisher scoring, which is essentially the Newton, the Newton algorithm for linear models. Um, if you use a canonical link, and um, and what it, one way of viewing it is that it's uh, you you compute a working response and a and a, at, at each iteration and a weight vector and then you fit a, a reweighted least squares. Yeah. Well, we set things up so we could fit a reweight a, a weighted uh, sorry you fit a weighted least square you could fit a weighted additive model. Right? Right. So it made it very modular. Right. So we had algorithms for fitting additive models with these non-parametric smoothers, backfitting algorithm, could yeah. fit a weighted additive model. But then, you know, we, we're a little bit hand wavy about things like convergence and a little bit hand wavy. <laughs> we were hand wavy. <laughs> and then then uh, by the time the paper was published, um, I was at Bell Labs, Rob was in University of Toronto. Right. Andreas Buya visited Bell Labs. And so then we decided it was time to study the convergence of this backfitting. And, and, right. and we found that with smoothing splines, which were a particularly well-behaved smoothing method, which yeah. you know was the solution of a convex optimization problem, you know, um, so things were nice. The smooth the so-called smoother matrix was nice at the symmetric at the eigenvalues between zero and one. And, and so it was more meanable to study. And for that class of smoothers, um, we found with, well, Andreas basically yeah. came up with this proof. It's a pretty hard proof. I mean, when I look back at the proof now, it's, it's hard, you know, but uh, he was, he's, he had the, he was he had the mass to, horsepower yeah. to be able to, to yeah. push through. So that was, that was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then our book came out. The book came out in ninety one, I think, or ninety ninety. Yeah. So yeah, we were into this stuff big time. I mean, you know, generalized additive models. I think part of the thing with it was that that I think both of us liked was that, you know, this non, you know, in a way, non parametric uh, smoothing and and you know these automatic methods. In a sense, it was a little bit like neural networks today. You know, you got this big, heavy sledgehammer, and you can do all this stuff. But both of us had worked in applied statistics for a while, yeah. and you realize you don't want to throw the whole kitchen sink at every problem. And and if you work with people with practitioners, you know, they like to move gently. So the idea was, and the nice thing with the additive model is that you can make a blend between the traditional models. Right. You, know, you have a start for the linear model, you can make some terms nonlinear, you know. Sometimes you've got categorical variables, they can be represented as, as factors. So it's kind of in, in the sweet spot between you know, restrictive linear models and things like neural nets, which are yeah. useful, but very hard to interpret. So it's, it maintains mm -hmm. interpretability, but gives you more, uh, more flexibility. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and so they they've 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 hung around, which is nice to see, right? They they've they've hung around, and uh, there, there, there was a guy in uh, in, in the neural net field, his name um, from you going to the insight. Some people in neural nets have rediscovered uh, out of yes, yes. But what's the guy's name? Uh, oh, um, oh he, yeah, he, he, he's in Microsoft Research. Yes. Oh, I should know his name because I, I Rich I, Karuna. I had a few. The, Karuna, Rich Karuna. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. And uh, because these days, as um, with deep learning and neural networks, right, they want explainable AI. So you right. want to understand what the thing, you know, what what kind of function you get in that. And guess yeah. what? Yeah, additive models have come back and generalized yeah. additive models as as a nice form of explainable AI. And I assume they're also, of course, they're in, they're in the S plus software. I mean, you you put that you put them in 
with G S plus of two n, which is now in R, there's right. a there's a gam library in R that fits generalized additive models. Is it Python as well, sir. Is it and it's uh, is it in yeah, there's a Python package for for GAMs. Yeah, it wasn't written by any of us, but um, it's it's there. And uh, yeah, and our book after our book, um, there's another book uh, by Simon Wood that came out a number of years later, yeah. and um, and and you know he's expanded on additive models and he's got uh, GAMMs mixed effects with additive models. And, you know, it's quite a, it's a it's a little mini industry now. Okay, and, and then we had we had the, the variant coefficients model is another extension of that, right? Where the the, the parameter functions themselves were smooth, <clears throat> were smooth functions, right? Yes, right. yes, right. yeah, that yeah, right. That and that's, that's pretty widely used too, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, oh, and then there was there was also some little side stories, right? Because um, we weren't the only players in the game. Mm -hmm. um, at the time we were doing these additive models, there was uh, Peter Green, was, was a, is a well-known statistician from England, and he was into semi-parametric GLMs, right? yeah. GLMs with some nonlinear um, parts. Typically, in his case, initially it was you had a linear model and you had one variable that you wanted to be nonlinear, and he would use a spline for fitting that. Yeah. So he was definitely in, in the game and poised, you know, yeah. Yeah. and you and I went to a conference right after graduation right. in, yeah. uh, where was it? Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah. And Peter Green was there and we gave our talk. And uh, First, before his? I believe it was before yeah. his. And he, he was clearly a little bit sh chagrined and he, you yeah. know, and he told, he told, he told us afterwards that uh, he felt like he was pipped at the post. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think one advantage we had also was was computation, right? Because yeah. uh, like the computers around the world were slow, and especially in England, they probably were a couple of years, five years behind Slack, I'd say, right? So yeah. we had the advantage that we could actually try these things out, like it's nested. Yeah. It, so, yeah. And of course, our first uh, GAM program was written in Fortran, right? Right. At Slack, actually in Mortran, and which yeah. translated into Fortran. So yeah. Yeah, the world has changed a lot since then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, your, your iPhone's faster than our computer was, right? Yes. Oh God, many times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's that's great. So thank you very much, Trevor, and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Bye bye. Yeah.